Hey, Kristen, uh, good to see you again. And so excited to catch up with you after you've graduated ID Labs. Uh, so I'd love to hear about, you know, how you're doing right now and uh, what's going on in your life uh, from a career standpoint. Sure, so I just started a new role at a company. Um, they're about a few years old. Um, it's, I started as a uh, senior product designer um, on a small team. I'm the fifth, fifth designer. Um, the company does uh, live, live selling. Um, so, and they're actually the industry leader in that field, so. Um, it's pretty exciting time to be on the team and and be in that that industry and that niche of e-commerce. So um, yeah, I'm excited. Um, this is my end of my third week, so coming up on a month in it. In it. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, it's a very ex exciting role. Lots to do. Lots of multiple products lines. So uh, growing very quickly. Wow. Okay. Nice. That's awesome to hear. And could you tell me a little bit more on how you got this job and, and what the job search was like? Sure. So I actually got this role through a recruiter. Um, and I was um, approached, you know, like I said, through the recruiter about this role. Um, and I was in the middle of some other job um, interviews um, while I was uh, approached about this one. And this one, um, they were looking for someone that had uh, a very heavy like visual background, which was good for me because I came from uh, an art direction background. Yeah. Um, so that was you know something that I was interested in and it was a good segue from my previous job, which was in e-commerce as well. Um, so it was, yeah, a good fit for me. And as far as like the job search, um, it took me about, let's see, I ended ID Labs, it was at May. And then, <laughs> um, so I just started this end of September. So only a few months for me to, yeah. to land a, a job, but I had several interviews in the process. Um, and I think this was actually my fourth job offer. Um, wow. So, and each one I increasingly got like a, a better offer with a, like a higher salary um, and benefits. And I actually was able to double my salary <laughs> um, from what I was making. But in, in terms of the, um, the job search itself, um, I, what really benefited from, you know, the, the labs was really taking advantage of um, rewriting my resume and going over that with you guys and really learning to take a look at the the job descriptions and kind of figuring out and pinpointing what were the key descriptions and keywords that they were looking for and trying to align those with uh, the previous jobs that I had and, and try to work those keywords in. Um, yeah. And so that was definitely something that I, I kept rewriting. I think I have like 20 versions of my resume at this point. Wow. Um, so like if the job was more like strategy based, I tried to uh, highlight those things. If it was more like visual, I uh, highlighted more of those. Um, so I, you know, would kind of go in and rework those. Um, but as far as the job, um, interview for this role itself, um, I actually had to do a, a whiteboard challenge for this one, um, which was which was really interesting. And this one I actually really liked because the challenge was um, something aligned with the actual problem that they were currently encountering and trying to solve. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it was an interesting way to kind of already get my hands into what they were kind of already doing and see, get a almost like a sneak peek into the kind of work that they were doing um, and collaborate, see how I collaborated with the team beforehand. Um, and I liked that, like I liked that it was a real world issue. Sometimes you get like these whiteboard challenges that are like, um, like just make a UI for a time machine. And I'm like, I don't, 
that's <laughs> so relevant to anything. <laughs> yeah um so I really enjoyed that and I also got to do like an app critique which was really interesting so like I got to pick whatever apps that I wanted to to go over and and you know uh, walk through and what I liked what I didn't like how it um, was a strength for the business what could be improved um so that was something that I had never gotten to do before um yeah. and any other type of interview so those were two two things that I think were were definitely interesting and really cool to talk through okay and and can you talk to me about your design process throughout the whiteboard challenge how did you kind of ground yourself and kind of stay in the moment but also kind of bring out the knowledge that you had yeah so it's definitely like a very um intimidating for someone to like be like all right so we're gonna do this challenge on the spot and you have to think about you know what is that challenge but you have to like kind of remember that like there's no right answer to the problem um and like they don't have an answer either like this is this is an actual like problem that they're encountering or maybe not maybe it's the time machine one <laughs> but like that's that's really what they're looking for is they really just want to see like how you're talking through um you know you know your thought process and that's uh what i really wanted to do was kind of i started asking questions like okay what's the the target audience what's the goal what are you trying to achieve with this change? Um, what are the problems that you've already been seeing with anything that you've already tried to do? Um, and just try to capture as much information as possible. Like what else is going to be affected by this um, to try to like just get, you know, a, a wider sense of where this is gonna live within the product. Um, and then from there, I just kind of started to think about um, you know, what is going to actually be the best um, approach, or maybe even just, you know, multiple different approaches and see kind of what sticks, what doesn't stick, and then like start just talking about one of those ideas. And then as you talk through one of those, you start to like, see, you know, where problems might arise. And then you kind of just have to backtrack and then try to find another one. So that's really what they're looking for. It's like, you know where you can actually be self-aware and identify those those issues on your own and not just like get like so like narrow-minded into one idea and and how do you feel because i know we did a lot of that in the beginning portion of id8 labs so uh did that help in any way or can you talk a little bit more about your project and kind of the problem solving aspects yeah so i um my project was on um uh, financial literacy in, in young adults. And so when I was initially starting to do that project, it was going to be on just like, how does an adult solve or like know how to learn how to be an adult? And that was like a really large problem <laughs> to try yeah. to solve in one product. Um, and as I was doing the, the user interviews, I kind of realized that, wow, there are a lot of things um, through a lot of different, and I, I had interviewed like parents of, and guardians of current uh, students and like college age um, people like my age or millennials who are just like now established in adulthood and then actual like young adults. So across all three of those user types, I got like various different answers and that made me realize this is too wide of a scope um, and like what what path do I want to go down? What seems to be the biggest issue that they're all encountering and still wanting to try to solve? And that uh, ended up being like finances. Um, because at, at, at first I was like, well, we can teach them how to like change the oil in the car and like how to like find a mortgage and all these things. But it was really like the one thing that kept popping up was, was finances. So, um, and I also found that like through that, I really had to adjust like the questions that I was asking to um, not to like get a more biased answer, but to okay. to not, yeah, to try to narrow down that focus to be more financially relevant. Yes, you said it so well. I that's that makes so much sense. It's it's really not about the solutions you're trying to create. It's all about finding the right problem to solve and finding a very specific problem to solve uh, mm -hmm. and scoping it, like you said. And it really is an iterative process of 
uh, rethinking your questions and rethinking things each step of the way. Um, can you speak to that a little bit more of, uh, I think a lot of designers, especially me, I still have this mistake I get really attached to one idea and I can't let it go and I don't see the big picture. Uh, so how do you kind of, like you said, keep that balance between what are all the possibilities out there, but then know when it's the right time to focus on a possibility, if that makes yeah. sense. That's, that's, I mean, there's all, there's like all the tangible things of like, all right, it's time to focus on this like deadlines, like, okay, we have to get this into the next release. So it's time to pick one and go with it. Like, or, you know, it's just like, there's scope creep and, you know, you're like, this is like a wildly cool idea. And like, this, I think is like a better solution, but you might be only able to get like the minimum viable product in there. Um, yeah. So those are like a lot of the like things you have to balance there. Um, and that's kind of like actually one of the things I'm encountering right now with like a project I'm working on. Um, it's like we need to get something in there by Black Friday that would really help these uh, shop owners in their um, admin panel. And I'm like, well, this is, I think, a better solution, but we don't have time to to d develop that. So what's a, you know, more minimal, simple solution um, that I could still solve this a similar issue and get them where they need to be for like a version one or an inter first iteration um and then kind of go from there so that's like a, a a problem that i still tend to deal with is like i want this to be perfect can't always be perfect um and yeah so i definitely still deal with that like idea of like perfectionism and like knowing when enough is enough and i think um I've also dealt with that a lot in terms of like giving feedback. Um, and I've learned that in terms of that is like when I ask myself the question is like, is this going to stop this project from solving the like main goal? And if it doesn't, then I just like don't give that feedback. And I think that's a good way to apply to the, this as well. That is so that is so insightful is yeah it's all around the problem or the goal that you're trying to achieve and if it's not relevant to the problem or the goal, leave it for later table it and know yeah. you're making that decision to table it, which is really great. Mm -hmm. um, I guess to kind of wrap up, uh, you know, is there if you could give one piece of advice to junior designers starting out and who are kind of overwhelmed by all the possibilities, what would you tell them. Um, I would tell them, you know, just try to absorb all the information that you can. There are so many resources out there and definitely take advantage of trying to like find a, a mentor or mentors um, because UX is such a like, it's still a very new field. Like they're not, I mean, I don't know. There's, I don't know if they're teaching that in college or not, but it's still very new and there's still very different opinions. So it's great to try to hear and learn all of those. Um, I mean, I'm still learning it myself. Um, yeah. So I, I just, you know, try to learn as, as much as possible and try to find like a, a place or a job where you know that you are going to have that support to be able to continue to learn um, and, and grow and not just be like thrown into the lion's den. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So that's really like my suggestion. And there are like, it's really the perfect time to get into UX. I can't tell you how many recruiters have still reached out to me, even though like it says like right on my LinkedIn, like I've started a new job. <laughs> it's there's so many available roles open. So it's yeah. really good time to, to get into to product design and UX UI. Wow. Okay. That was amazing. And, and thank you so much for sharing your, your perspective and your ideas. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Thank you.